morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News, and it's Monday, December 9th, 2024. New Madrid fault zone is a rocking and a rolling today. And in my opinion, I think it's caused by the earthquakes that have been occurring along the Aleutian Islands. As the seismic waves move across the United States, yes, yeah, triggering earthquakes that were already prepared to um, to fracture. It all started today with this magnitude 2.2 earthquake uh, near Matthews, Missouri. And it was shallow, about 12 miles in depth. Shallow earthquakes are anything that's probably... Uh, 20 maybe 25 miles below sea level anything above that is considered shallow um, 20 to yeah there's been earthquakes maybe about 300 miles in depth those are uh, considered deep earthquakes all of these are really shallow so we got this 2.2 no one said they felt it it occurred at 1208 a.m local time and I'm going to take you to Google Earth. You know, you can see that there's a river through here and earthquake faults often follow. And down over here is the uh, um, area where they had those large earthquakes, magnitude 8, what, 8.1 in um, 1811 and 1812. So that's the first indication that the fault is moving, uh, trying to move towards the, the, the north there. Drawn out in blue is the uh, seismic zone that ruptured during 1811 and 1812. And over here we got the real foot lake that was created by sinking because of that earthquake. Um, I got here um, 8.4. The next earthquake was a magnitude 2.7, 4.9 miles in depth. About the same um, as, well, it was a little bit shallower. Than the 2.2. The 2.2 was about 12 miles in depth. So I'll show you the location of that earthquake. Yeah, the uh, town of New Madrid is up over here. Right there where the bend of the, the river is at. The reason the river is bent, it's a block zone. Kind of like what's going on there by Hedgen Lake at Yellowstone. Um, yeah, it fractured and uh, the fault line that was originally going from... Um, west to east etc um didn't do it so it's pushing northward you can see the line drawn there so we'll go to that earthquake right there the magnitude 2.7 if you look at the ground here in the image you see discoloration uh, these are the remnants of the blow holes where sand and water shot out of the ground during the 1811, 1812 earthquakes. Yeah, just shot way up in the air and left these deposits of sand, which is now a farming area. Now that was near or close to Howardville, Missouri. And then the next one that occurred was a 2.1, uh, close to the same location. 7.7 .7 kilometers in depth or 4.8 miles. No one said they felt this one either. And I'll show you where that one was at. See, it's close to this uh, 2.7 right there. Yeah, look at that. A lot of unusable farmland there, isn't there? That earthquake occurred at 427 a.m. today. The next earthquake was by Wrigley, Tennessee. That was down over here. Uh, 4.7 miles in depth. Yeah, you see it's all about the same. Yeah, it's trying to move north. 5.31 a.m. local time. And I'll show you its location. Yeah, we'll go past this one, the uh, Cottonwood Fault Zone. Right there. Yeah. They think uh, what I got drawn out in blue is the area that ruptured. Yeah, back in 1811, 1812. Again, that was 4.7 miles in depth. The next one that USGS has reported is a 1.9, also 4.7 miles in depth, or 7.5 kilometers in depth. No one said they felt it. That occurred at 6.25 a.m. 
also near Howardville, Missouri. So using Google Earth, yep, up there towards the uh, west of uh, New Madrid City, right there. Yeah, look at all the sand. Yeah, and what do we got here? What do we got there? Oh, power lines. Okay, and they got some clearing to keep, you know, probably for fires and things like that. Okay, and then over here. Yeah. There's New Madrid right there. And this is the Mississippi River. The most recent earthquake that they have posted for today is a magnitude 2.2. 5.2 miles in depth or 8.4 kilometers. Again, no one said that they felt this earthquake. And that was at 7.30 a.m. And we'll go to its location. A little bit closer to the river. You know, if people prepare for a large disaster, such as an earthquake, um... If you were prepared, there'd be one less person I would have to warn to be prepared and would have to worry about. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, or is known as NMSZ, is located in the southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, and southern Illinois. I've reported a lot of earthquakes that have happened there. It is the most seismic area in the United States. Um, east of the Rocky Mountains. The area includes major cities such as Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis. Yeah, think of the fill and the collapse of all those buildings that couldn't happen. Little Rock, Arkansas, and Evansville, Indiana. Every year, hundreds of earthquakes happen in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. We're getting more, I believe, because of the large earthquake that occurred along the Aleutian Islands. Many of the faults they don't even know about because they're buried beneath sediment, which is 100 to 200 feet thick. Surface traces of the faults in this soft soil erode quickly and may be rapidly covered by new deposits, especially along the rivers and areas where, yeah, um, the ground is, the groundwater, I should say, is closer to the surface. Since the faults are buried, um, being, knowing where the faults are at, um, is not well understood and more difficult to study. So they basically follow the different earthquake faults or earthquakes to maybe understand where there might be some hidden faults. Currently, scientists have found evidence of three or more large earthquakes, including a magnitude 7.0 or larger which have occurred in the last 2,000 years. USGS studies have shown that major earthquakes do occur anywhere between 500 to 1,200 years for a major rupture. That would be like a magnitude 7, 2, and 8. But that is not always the case. They could come sooner. An example, you know, they had the 1811 and 1812 earthquakes, but then in um, 1895, they had a magnitude 6.7. So that was approximately only 83 years after the 1811-1812 earthquakes. Only 83 years later, they had a 6.7, they estimated. It is estimated that even a magnitude 6.7 earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone is expected to cause major damage near the fault system in Missouri, Bolt Hill, North East Arkansas and Western Kentucky and Tennessee. Significant damage will likely extend up north along the Mississippi River Valley to St. Louis, up the Ohio and Wabash River Valleys, uh, close to Owensboro, Kentucky, and Indianapolis, Indiana, and down the Mississippi River Valley to Greenville, Mississippi. Significant damage is also expected in the southern Illinois, western Kentucky, and Tennessee, northeastern Arkansas, and northwest Mississippi, as well as in areas southeast Missouri outside of the Boot Hill. That is all areas they expect extreme damage from just a magnitude 7.6.
During the 1811-1812 earthquakes, approximately 5,500 square miles, or about 3.5 million acres, of the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys were impacted by landslides, fissures, huge crack cracks in the ground opened up, sand blowholes, and lateral spreading. This is why they cut down trees to put across the crevices so they can you know, go from one side to the other. There was subsidence, submergence, and uplift. This is important to know that even the basic single-story log buildings, which are in fact of our very earthquake resistant type construction, often shifted or sunk as parts of the area submerged and flooded. Many people, because of the flooding, just ended up loading up their wagons and moving out. Much of the area became unusable because of the subsidence. Uh, different types of agriculture in that day were no longer um, able to be farmed. Different types of buildings, even today, that are susceptible to damage from shaking would be tall structures like buildings, bridges, and dams. Large open structures such as auditoriums, classrooms, factories, hospital, churches, brittle structures like unreinforced masonry buildings, and unreinforced concrete. Also would be uh, buildings that they consider complex structures with odd shapes and lots of corners. You would also have to worry about what's called soft structures where the garages are underneath the main living quarters um, on the top floors. There's also the threat with unanchored building contents like bookshelves, filing cabinets, storage racks, pipes, fire sprinkler systems, water heaters, and mechanical equipment. You know, think of all the factories and think about all the things you have on your, um, maybe your work desk, your computers, your TVs, things like that. Yes, please be prepared. You just don't know when or where the next large earthquake is going to occur. I did get a message yesterday from one person that said because of my videos, they are now prepared or preparing. I told them, oh, thank God for that. Yeah, you're one less person I would have to worry about. Yeah, you would be cut off from communication, emergency services, food, water, and sewer. Your home might be on the top of a hill where you don't have to worry about someone above you uh, flushing their toilet and their sewage coming into your home because you're downstream. Lift stations that pump the sewage uphill wouldn't be working during a power outage. So, yeah, gravity would just bring all that sewage into people's um, basements and homes. And depending on how long it was out, yeah, you could have the threat of catching different types of diseases from the sewage, such as cholera. So please be prepared. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.